is the second day of the conference and here we are all of us discussing how exactly and what kind of uh, government do we require in the future. As far as all these parallel sessions are concerned, as you can see on the board here, there are various rooms in which various topics are being discussed. We have uh, a topic, creating a culture of unity and peace. In group number two, they are discussing establishing rule of law. Then here we're discussing the global governance structure. We also have tackling global issues. Next is towards international law enforceability. And lastly, sustainable development. So we all realize that all these are very closely linked and like our chief guest mentioned yesterday, we must decide on a mission and work accordingly. So our mission is to set about or orient our students so that they are able to think in terms of peace, in terms of bringing peace into this world. So here we have our panelists up on the stage today. And to discuss the issue, we have our chairperson, Honorable Ms. Justice Halima Saldukar, the judge from the Supreme Court of Appeal, South Africa. She has very nicely, she has been, she has, uh, we are really grateful to her that, chair, hear, her that we, she has agreed to chair the session. And we have the other speakers who are already on the dais. As far as the session, the session is concerned, it's been very, very specially convened for our students. And why we say for our students is because you get an opportunity to, to interact with these legal luminaries. So today, after the speakers have put forth their views, we are going to open the session to you all. And you can ask them any questions that arise in your mind when you listen to their speeches. All the speakers are going to be getting seven minutes to put forth their views. A uh, bell is going to be rung at the end of seventh minute, and thereafter they will wind up their speeches. With the permission of the chair, is that okay, ma'am? Yes. Okay. May I now request you to sort of talk a little bit about the topic so that we can roll on the same. Over to you, ma'am. Um, the topic for today is the global governance structures and the, um, the subtext for discussion is UN reform. Um, UN reform, the need for a new world order on democratic lines, structure of global democracy, and the consideration of options that are available for global structures suggested by various organizations for effective global governance. Now, there are rules and regulations in the diaspora of public governance structures, especially in their representativity and the structures charged with carrying out these functions. In carrying out this function, the world watches. The citizens of the world watch. We don't live alone. We live in a global village. And therefore, expectations run high in the global communities about what is happening in the world out there. The functions in government structures include legislative, executive, having, as the title suggests, both political and bureaucratic elements. To some advocates, the United Nations is at crossroads, and there is a critical need for its reform, but for some, they advocate no change. The United Nations was set up in the context of the Cold War and contributed meaningfully to the defining guidelines taking up the decolonization issues that faced the world at the time. That was decades year, years ago. What do we need now? We need a transformation in the perspective of building a global democracy. 
perhaps, as some of the speakers have suggested, a new world order built on democratic lines, global democracy, global social contact with all your neighbors, in a broader alliance taking into account social and political forces. There is a greater need to work together. As Justice Dixon put it at the start of this conference, that love and determination and the spirit of working together collectively has to be the foundation of any reform of a world order. Collective action to develop an international rule of law has to be done in a collective mandate with all. Economic power has economic implications for education, for health, and for the environment. Very important for children and directly related to the theme of this conference. It is not only about wealth and finance. It's also about how we can reform to make economic structures better for the children of the world. Give them a voice. They need a voice. Children need to be heard, and they need to be heard about their future. Others are making the decisions for them. They need to be heard about how they want to improve their lives, their education, and the environment. And we cannot shy away from facing these challenges. More than ever, the world is failing, facing challenges on the cultural, social, and environmental challenges. Children face many. Child labor, child abuse, child trafficking. The list is endless. The refugee crisis is engulfing us all. We just need to put on the television to see what is happening in our neighbors' homes. Do we sit back and watch? Do we say that it's not our problem? Do we say that what's happening across the Mediterranean does not affect us? Among the boats arriving on the shores for greener pastures are many, many children. Women carrying their babies. Women delivering their babies. All in the quest for looking for a better future for themselves, for their families, and for their children. Do we turn our backs on them? Do we say that it doesn't matter? We live far away. It matters. We live in a global village. What happens to our neighbors happens to us. And it affects us. We must act now. We must be bold enough to embrace a system that will be able to generate a solution to the problems that face the world. I mean, these are not the only problems. We have climate change, economic instability, mass, mass migration, trafficking of people. These are some of the stark realities that face all of us. What we need is a change of mindset. It's imperative that we don't adopt the attitude that it's not our problem as to what is happening in another country where lives are lost, that is not a solution. Love thy neighbor, create solidarity for peace, sustainability, and justice. In this way, we will embrace the world as our family. We are family, we are a brotherhood of human beings. As Mr. Jagdish Gandhi has repeatedly said in this conference, Creating nuclear weapons and armory is creating machinery to kill our own people. We have had world wars where we have killed each other, our brothers, our sisters and loved ones. It has to stop. In this new millennium, dialogue is necessary. Otherwise, history will judge all of us. In a new century, there has to be a renaissance in global thinking and about global governance. 
Human rights is the foundation of all free societies. And as a global movement, we need to change. We should not, on a global level, be afraid to negotiate and consult even with those that we know will be recalcitrant. I come from South Africa. Nelson Mandela's actions were outstanding. During his time in prison, he used words as an instrument of emancipation. He negotiated even with his own worst enemies. He assumed responsibility in his country's transition to liberal democracy, doing what seemed impossible at the time. If he could change South Africa and the government from an oppressive regime to a democratic state that we have, then there is hope for our global village. We need to have shared perspectives to tackle the problems facing global governance and a collective effort of citizens in the world, private entities and NGOs. Collective problems need collective world solutions. After all, we did move from medieval times to present times. What we need is change. Mahatma Gandhi was only about 25 years old when he assisted to find the Natal Indian Congress in South Africa, which molded the Indian community in South Africa into a political force before he moved on to fight for the freedom of India. Remarkable achievement and an inspiration for all the children all over the world and the youth and the people. Children and the youth of the school and the children all over the world, you are the agents of change. And inspired by Mahatma, you must be the change you want to see in this world. In South Africa, we have an expression that I want to share with you, which is called Ubuntu. Ubuntu means it's an actually an ancient African word meaning humanity to others. It means I am what I am because of who we all are. We are people of the world living in a global village. Since the transition to democracy, the concept of Ubuntu in South Africa is a guiding ideal. I can tell you that as a judge, when we sit in our judgments, that we also use the word Ubuntu. It appears in the epilogue of our interim constitution in 1993, where it is stated that there is a need for understanding, but not for vengeance, a need for reparation, but not for retaliation, a need for Ubuntu, not for victimization. Humanity is a quality that we owe to each other as human beings. We create each other, and therefore we need to sustain each other and what is happening all over the world. If we participate in our own creations, then we belong to each other. And we are because of who you are. And since you are, definitely I am. Ubuntu is a humanity concept and we must strive for peace, stability in the world through the ch eyes of the children. Thank you. <laughs> we will have the next speaker now and that will be the Honorable Mr. Justice Denise Ramora. Welcome. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I would like to explain about structure of global democracy, but emphasis in Thailand. Do you know Thailand, the country in the southeast Asia. How can we structure global democracy? 
I think that Thailand's experience in developing its democratic process will prove valuable to development of regional and universal democratic models. First of all, let me tell you, tell you about the development of democracy in Thailand. Thailand was an absolute monarchy for over seven years. During that time, the monarchs had absolute power and control. However, in 1932, the nation of Siam and its used to be called adopted a democratic form of government similar to the English model. The change did not come from a demand by the people, such as in France, but from a negotiation between the king and the kingdom elites, many of whom has been educated in Europe. The result of this negotiation led to the end of absolute rule by the king. The king remained the head of state, but a constitutional government ruled the country with the prime minister at its head. A general election resulted in the birth of the first national assembly. During the first 25 years of Thailand democracy, the parliament consisted of two groups, members who were elected by the people and members appointed by the military. Conflict between those two groups emerged and during the period there were several coup d'etat with the majority of resulting government being under the control of the military. After a coup in 1957, the military governed the country for 16 years without an elected parliament. In October 1973, a student led uprising spearheaded the downfall of the military government. Thailand once again had an elected parliament, but powerful business interests came to control the politi political parties. This was about the practice of vote buying. People being paid money to vote for particular political parties in elections. This practice bec became a serious problem for the democracy. After the parties came to power, they got their money back by requiring the private sector to make then payments of various kinds to the government in order to carry out their operations. These payments amounted to 10 to 30 percent of all funds allocated to a public service activity. This resulted in the government more and more frequently making policy to serve their own interests. These policies also involve ever increasing amounts of annual government expenditure. The policies were implemented to obtain money for the government to pay people to vote for them in elections. This undermined the democratic process and weakened the people because they did not understand their lies and tended to just wait for money from the government. Not surprisingly, this eventually led to an economic crisis and later to a mass movement against the government. The military took over administration to stabilize social unrest. After a while, the military handed 
administrative control back to elected official, but social unrest emerged again. And last year, there was yes another military coup. At present, we are trying to find a model of democracy that can that can stop the pendulum from swinging between corrupt civilian government and military takeovers. We are searching for a stable government, one that has checks and balances of popularity sinking policies of the government. It is important that Thailand find a style of democracy suitable for Thai people. In Thailand, we have discussed the German election model called population election, hoping that it might lead to the parliament become the real representative of the people. People from every group in the country. We have also talked about ways to prevent coup by establishing a committee composed of members from every sector. The government, the opposition, the military, the courts, and others. It has been proposed that this committee be empowered to exercise authority during times of national politic, political crisis. But in time when the system is normal, this committee will have no power. Some politicians and inter intellectuals, however, dislike this proposal as they think it is not democratic. In any event, we do not to follow Western democratic models, but the essential elements of democracy in Thailand, the same, the same as in all democratic countries, must bring freedom, brotherhood, human rights, and peace to our nation. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very grateful and excited to participate to this Congress. I congratulate the organizers and extend my gratitude for all attention received. Uh, we are from Argentina. Um, you know, as my English is not very good, I will speak at the beginning in Spanish, and my daughter will translate my words in English. Um, this work is originally from Commission Number 2. Thank you, thank you very much. La República Argentina desde agosto de 2015 tiene un nuevo código civil en materia de regulación de las personas que derogó un código que era desde el año 1871. En materia de regulación de la persona humana y su capacidad civil hay una acentuada y marcada vigencia del principio de la capacidad de ejercicio. Todo esto ha significado un claro restablecimiento de la persona humana como figura central del derecho. Vamos a referirnos a algunas cuestiones relativas a los menores de edad. Hello. Good afternoon. Um, Argentina has a new unified civil and commercial code since August 4th, 2015 which repealed the original civil code that entered into force in 1871, while they later lived with the partial reform and numerous complementary laws, many of its articles kept the original text of the 19th century. About the human person and civil capacity regulation, we can observe a profound accentuation of the principle of exercise capacity 
restricting to the limit the situations on which a person cannot exercise for itself the rights that is entitled. This has meant a clear restoration of the human person as the central figure of the law. Regarding minors, the new code has strengthened the principle of progressive autonomy of children. Point number, point number one uh, is the beginning of human personhood. The new code, after its legislative sanction, states that the existence of the human being begins at the conception. The project of the drafting commission contained another regulation which expressly contemplated the hypothesis of assisted fertility techniques and their impact on the beginning of the existence of the human personhood. Uh, the problem that arises here is to define the term conception. The problem arising by artifi artificial fertilization technologies with the current regulation have been kept on waiting for special legislation. Uh, point number two, minor person. The new Article 25 provides that minor is a person who has not at uh, attained 18 years. The new code introduces long-awaited changes requested by Argentinians' legal community. Of particular importance is the matter is the Convention of the Rights of the Child of 1989 incorporated into Argentine law by the constitutional reform in 1994, having been previously approved in 1990s. In addition, Argentina has, had already sanctioned different local laws, including the compre comprehensive protection of the rights of children and adolescents in 2006. Because I, I don't know if you, if you know Argentina, we had a, a, a in, for a long period of time, we had uh, military governments that uh, stop the, the development of democracy in our country. So this law was sanctioned in democracy. Uh, the teenager, a new concept does appear. It is the child who is between 13 and 18 years old. According to this, the minor will be child from birth until the age of 13 and teenager from that age until the age of maturity at 18 years. Point number three, exercise of rights. Uh, the minor person exercise their rights through their legal representatives. However, minor with age and sufficient degree of maturity can exert themselves acts that are permitted by law. In terms of capacity, the traditional Argentine system always worked with extreme rigidity, based on general concepts and without a particular observation on each individual considered in itself. That system did not distinguish between patrimonial acts from acts and personality rights. The representation continuously and indiscriminately entrusts to parents in order to compensate for the inability of the child. It is contrary to the rules of progressive autonomy, which is contained on provisions of international documents of human rights. Uh, the new code maintains the general principle of the inability of minors to exercise, but it enables the child that has age and sufficient degree of maturity to exercise the acts that are permitted by law. This means a flexibilization of the system and has explicitly introduced into domestic law the principle of progressive autonomy of children and adolescents. Autonomy of adolescents, uh, point number four, and the last one. In addition to these cases, there are many examples of the receipt of the principle of progressive autonomy in the exercise of rights of adolescents on the new legal regulation. For example, the Article 64, related to the name of the children, states that the child with age and sufficient maturity can add the surname of the other parents, for example. On general principles on adoption, the new regulation establishes the rights of adolescents to be heard and for their opinion to be taken into account, being mandatory to require their consent from the age of 10 years old. 
The adopted adolescent is empowered to initiate autonomous, autonomous legal action in order to know the origins. In this case, they must have legal assistance and participate as a party to the procedure that concludes the declaration of adoptability. adoptability. For the regular exercise of parental responsibility uh, of the teenage parents, it is established that they exercise that responsibility over their children, whether they are married or not, they can decide from them for, from themselves and perform the task necessary for the care, education and health. Well, these are some points of the new legal code. Uh, I hope you enjoy my speaking of English. I'm a little bit nervous and thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, and thank you for assisting uh, your father in uh, translating what he wanted to say Whoa. to the students. <laughs> I think you need to thank him. Um, our next speaker is... Um, just get your name. Ms. Erika Wu from Faupal, USA. Welcome. Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Judges, Teachers and Students of CMS, good afternoon. I am an international volunteer from the Federation of World Peace and Love. As you all know already, the world is suffering from various kinds of issues, such as poverty, wars, and terrorism. But what caused these issues of people and the environment suffering? If you think about it, these are all caused by people, we humans ourselves. When we let our selfishness and greediness dominate our ma mind and actions, negativity spreads to ourselves, others, and the environment. And these negativities blocks and prevents harmony among people. We have to be aware of the fact that this topic to create global democracy is hard to achieve as all these various kinds of issues are happening right now in the world. If we really want a united world with global democracy, the only way for this is for us to have the same mindset, for us to unite together and to, in order to overcome these negativities. One way for this is, of course, to start with our con to finding our conscience and keeping it in our hearts, and then lead this mindset to our actions. Conscience is a guide that can lead us to righteous. When we get, when we let our we set our conscience as the foundation of our actions of everything, we'll have the same mindset. In other words, it can overcome and abolish the barrier among people, among the discoordination between people. For me, I always ask my conscience of what to do when in a dilemma. My conscience tells me the best thing to do that benefits both me and the people around me, meaning I take into consideration of my peers' opinion. This is, of course, um, required for everyone to do the same in order to work. And this, this should be no fear for everyone because, this, because there's no wrong for doing right. The next step after finding your conscience is what actually matters. This means to ask if you'll regret the action in the future, if it is right or if it helps others. This way our actions will all turn out right and beneficial to the society and others. Now think about it again. If all of us use our conscience, all of our actions will spread positivity and will lead for the world to unite together and to form democracy. We can just fulfill our responsibilities. And for me as a student, how I act with conscience is to help others when they're in need and to inspire others to do the same with the courage I acquire 
from my conscience. When everyone makes selfless mistakes, when we think not only of ourselves but of other people, it is automatically helping and giving to others, which is what we know as love. This also leads to peace when we all try to benefit the society. Naturally, with finding our conscience, every one of us can achieve love and peace. And with love and peace and the coordination among pe people, it is easier for everyone to unite together towards the same goal and obey to the international government. We are here today as international volunteers because we want to share these aspects to more people for them to do the same. This is what makes our lives meaningful so that we'll, we won't regret it. A famous saying stated that, with great power comes with great responsibility. In democracy, where we have the, co we have the power to choose our actions, we held the responsibility to use it wisely, meaning that we have to act selflessly in order to benefit the whole society. This, this means that we have to think not only for ourselves, but also for other people. And to find our conscience, we have to use, if we find our conscience, we have to use it to help more people and inspire them to do the same. Another thing that is blocking our, the harmony among people right now is the cultural and religious barriers. In history, so many wars are fought and so many people died because of the misunderstanding and because they fought against each other for religious and cultural barriers. It is, us it is us humans that are unique, and we humans are unique and values different things. Our difference is what makes us special. However, we have to respect each other with what we have to prevent conflicts. And conscience is also to respect everyone equally, disregarding race, religious backgrounds, or cultural backgrounds. Every, when everyone if respects each other, we'll be able to avoid the conflicts. And with, without conflicts and with respect, the international, like, the world can work together more unitedly and more effectively for it to actually work. So, wait. So in the end, for the, in for, Global democracy to form is to actually work together to overcome some flaws of humanity. And all we need to do is to find our conscience and set it as our foundation in order to build on it and help others and for us to unite together to do the same. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Wu. Um, our next speaker is Mr. Steve Liu from Tajiman, Taiwan. Honor chairperson, honor judges, teachers, and students from CMS, good afternoon. Uh, I'm I'm Steve. I'm a deed of Taiji Man Qigong Academy. Uh, this means similar to student in Chinese, and we learn kung fu from from the Taiji Man is the place we learn kung fu from our shifu. Shifu Shri Fu is means master in Chinese. And in the beginning, I want to ask you a question: What's your first impression of kung fu, Jackie Chan? or the Kung Fu Panda. In fact, I do learn a lot of martial arts skills, and these martial arts skills are precious, and I'm very glad that I can learn these skills. Besides the power of Kung Fu, our master also attach a great importance to the power of heart. He always said, heart is a foundation. So training our heart is really important to us. In Chinese culture, People who had a, 
uh, good martial arts skills who called as Xia Ke. This is Chinese word, Xia Ke. And this is like a knight in Chinese culture. Like, it's like a knight in Chinese culture. And people, um, they always help the poor, the old, the women, and the kids. They are good hearted when society getting worse, they always stood up for the minority and fought with the bad guys. I think the reason that trigger them to stand up for people is because the conscience is in their, in their mind. So their heart follow the calling from the conscience and did the right things. But not only Xia Ke can, can help ordinary people, so do we. Everyone is the leader and the guide of his or her own conscience. We can do good deeds as same as Shaka did. On the 1st of January in 2014, the movement of an era of conscience started. Many, many world leaders also respond to the movement, including the Barack Obama, the President of the United States, the Queen Elizabeth II. In, the, in June, the organizers of ANEOC even held an event in Hollywood. Uh, the main purpose of the of the event is to deliver an idea that the kind intentions and good hearts are the positive energies necessary to safeguard the Earth's sus sustainable development, which is said by my master, Doctor Hom. We have the po we have posted the event e video on the website. If you interesting in this event, you can. You can just Google the AMEOC on the on the internet, and we also perform a Chinese also chi Chinese uh, drama in the Disney World. The drama is about is based on the fantasy novel uh, called The Journey to the West. It's a Chinese no novels, which is about a master lead for his dizi from a to bring the British scripture from ancient India to Chinese people. So they take the Buddhist script, scripture from Asian India to Chinese to help the to help people. In, in the journey, many monsters and after goals start them from achieving the goals. But after so many challenges, they are still they are ma they are still made it. I think we should learn from them. Because they they do the best with courage and they don't fear of anything because they know that he is they are doing the right things so they are with courage and fear I fear nothing and not only a big event can influ influence people but a small behavior with good heart can make the world better everyone every person has a beautiful heart and I believe the young people have the boundless potential and the purest heart I believe they have the great power to do anything to make the world better. Actually, doing a good deed is really simple. Praise your friends, be nice to the people around you, and give a hand to the people who are in trouble. <coughs> to spread your positive energy. Then you will have, then ev to have, everyone has the amazing power in his or her heart. I believe that if everyone believes in their self, and then you will have the energy as soon as Shaka did. The power of heart is way more powerful than strength. The power of heart can improve the coherence for, of human beings. The world will be more peaceful and no more wars. That can be done by the force or the strength. With conscience in our heart, People from all over the world can make the world a paradise. As Dalai, Mala, Dalai Lama said, compassion is not enough. You must, you must take action. If Shaka did not, did, didn't did do anything but thinking, but only thinking, they can help anyone. But they are take action. So let's unite together for the united world. And let's make this world a beautiful world. Thank you.
Yes. Um, as you have heard from all the speakers, war ravages countries, its people, and the women and children. And it is also clear from them that many lives have been lost in the quest of the countries striving to get democracy for its people. As I have said, the killing has to stop. Humanity to others must take over. Love, peace and stability must prevail in the world. Both our young speakers, Eric, Ms. Eric Wu and Steve Liu, have advocated peace, love, humanity to all, and their call for unity in the global village is a common theme amongst all the speakers today. It is important that the options for global governance incorporate a set of values and imperatives that protect common wealth, common property, and the earth that we live in, based on tolerance and accountability. After all, the earth does belong to all and those who live in it. We need to change for the common good, for our country, for the world, and for the children and our future. Thank you. Over to the coordinator. Uh, yes, uh, together we can once again very generously clap for all the speakers because they gave us an insight into many things. We heard from all our speakers about the plight of children in some parts of the world. We heard about the ravages of war and the destruction it causes. We heard about the various kinds of government systems which are there. And then of course we heard about the importance of spreading peace and love in this world. Well, I think that was a beautiful combination of thoughts that we heard today. And now it's over to you, the students of City Montessori School. It's the house is open to you. And you can ask questions. You can put forth your views. If you have some statements to make, please feel free to make them. At the same time, if you have some questions based on the speeches that you just heard, feel free to come and share your views. When you come here, please also introduce yourself and tell us who you want to address the question to. If it's a common question, you can address it to all of them, all the speakers, all the panelists up here, and whoever wants can take up the question. Please make your questions very precise and straight. So can we begin with the question answer session? Uh, will you all like to volunteer? Anybody who has a question? Yes, come on. Honorable judges, we all know that UN frames Millennium Development Goals sustainable development goals for all sorts of countries like for developed, developing and underdeveloped countries. As the MDG like that is Millennium Development Goals led deadline approached, around 1 billion people still live on less than $1.25 dollar a day. The World Bank measure on poverty and more than 800 million people do not have in enough food to eat. Women are still fighting hard for their rights and millions of people still die in childbirth. So, honorable judges, I would like to ask the question that are creating goals and ordering them to be fulfilled enough and if there, there is any global governance structure or the department to look after the fulfillment of these type of goals that is sustainable development goals which are given by United Nations then why the countries have not been able to fulfill them? Thank you. Uh, stay there, stay there. 
why have the country is not still been able to fulfill the goals that were set am yes. i right yes ma'am yes i think the, i think the problem is that um, the countries themselves face a lot of challenges and in the face of the current environment and instability and the war uh, war ravaged nations um delays will happen halt to improve sustainability global sustainability will also come to a halt um so for a world of love and peace and for the rights of the future generations it's important that we cannot afford any delays countries must be urged to take up the challenge peace is no longer a common um 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 aspiration but it's a shared responsibility of all the nations and it is said that what you say today is actually what is happening but I think the way the situation is in the world when um the forces of uh, goodness are no longer connected and people are no longer united in their quest to improve sustainability that we will experience this hopefully your mandate to 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 improve the situation for people in the world and to spread uh, the word that is the theme of the conference will go so far as even waking up the nations that are represented in the united nations to improve global sustainability and make this country a better place make the world a better place for all who, all, all who live in it i don't know whether there's anybody else who wants to contribute okay you want to say something I think it was uh, beautifully answered isn't it yes, and in the very beginning or when ma'am gave her speech our chairperson when she gave her speech she mentioned that the voices of the students have to be heard and she gave you a reason you have to decide on what kind of a world you want to live in and i think it's come to you people you take it up as a responsibility you decide the kind of world that you want and then go with a mindset through which you're going to work for the good of humanity Thank you so much ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much ma'am. Who's going to ask the next question? People from the back, yes please come. Who else please uh, think about your questions and come up? Just wait, just wait. Good evening honorable judges my question is that what could be the possible uh, contribution of youth and children towards world peace what could be our work what could we do right now from our stage from your from our stage from our okay. point as children as students what is it or how can they contribute towards world peace world peace how can they contribute towards bringing about peace in the world as students yeah you can because you said so much about it well. yeah <laughs> for myself i am a student as well yes. and i think it is actually really easy if you if you know what you're doing is right that you can just um help out anyone you can just start from the people around you because people There are so many people around us that need help but we sometimes just don't see it. So we can start by helping people around us and then later bring it to uh, training it. Yeah. Yeah. Um as the president of FOPA, the Federation of World Peace and Love where I'm from, mm -hmm. says every individual who wishes to do something good for the world is an angel of conscience safeguarding peace. The love and kindness in the heart give us the most powerful wings. Courage and action are the most potent tools. When the forces of goodness are connected and kind-hearted people are united, the magical power of love can turn the world around for a better and bring genuine lasting peace. Quoting 
Dr. Hong, the president of Federation of World Peace and Love. So that if you have the will and if you want to spread the positive energy, anyone can do it. And yeah, anyone can do it disregarding the, your position in the society. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I think both the representatives of FOPA, they mentioned the strength of the heart, right? They said the heart is the strongest. And if you're able to spread love and peace in the world, you'll automatically, it'll lead to unity, right? Uh, who's going to ask the next question? Yes, students, wake up. It's your turn. Oh, yes, come. Who's going to be the next speaker or the next person to ask a question? Somebody from the back. Yes. Somebody else? This side? Honorable judges, okay. my question is that what contribution would you as judges think you would have in this vision of a global governance and what steps would you take to ensure it? What contribution would you as judges think you would have in this vision of a global governance and would s what steps would you take to ensure it? What step? Okay, all right. What steps would judges be able to take, right? Yes. And what contribution? Okay. Contribution and steps. Okay. Hola. Okay. Did you say your name? Or? Tell us your name. My name is Utkarsh Tandon. Okay. Yo creo que el cambio general comienza con un cambio individual. Cada uno tiene de su lugar una obligación, el estudiante, el gobernante, el juez. I believe that general change starts from the change of an individual. Everyone has an obligation to bring a change, whether it's a citizen, student or a judge. Los jueces tienen principalmente la obligación de hacer cumplir las leyes. The judges in particular has the ob have the obligation to oblige by the rule. Y en el cumplimiento de esas leyes se asegura un estado democrático e igualitario. And through these laws they ensure that society is equal and lawful. Además, en muchos países del mundo los jueces constituyen una garantía para que no haya abusos de otros poderes. That's why all around the world the judges ensure that there, is, uh, there are not abuses of law in all the world. Entonces, cada uno desde su lugar tiene su obligación y su compromiso para mejorar la paz en todo el mundo. And everyone and every judge has the obligation to ensure that world peace is ensured. Okay. Thank you. Mention that uh, again, justice imparted fairly, everything would go on well, and again, the whole world is going to be good if we each one of us do whatever we have been assigned well. Who's going to come up with the next question? Anybody from the back, this side, from the center here, that side there? Come on, think of questions. You have students sitting over here. You can easily relate to them. Yes, come. You can easily relate to them. Come, come. Good evening. My question is to all the panelists sitting here. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there have been a lot of chatter in the world about forming a world government. Why do you think a world government is still not formed? Do you think the wo people of the world fear a world government? I just want your opinion about a world government. Okay, your basic question is, uh, do you think people fear a world government? Or yes, do you think the states fear a go world government? Yes, ma'am. Do you think, okay. I mean, these, do these people think that the world government is something to be feared from? To be afraid of. Why is it not still formed? Uh, 
why is it that this world government has still not been formed is it that the states fear the formation of a world government bueno la pregunta es muy interesante y quizás no tengamos una respuesta adecuada well the question is very interesting and perhaps we don't have the answer <laughs> yes las preguntas a veces nos sirven para motivarnos y pensar e ir para adelante, pero bueno, a veces no, es, no está la respuesta justa. Hay muchos límites en lo económico, en los intereses, en cuestiones que a veces suelen dividirnos. There are many uh, difficulties, economic difficulties, political difficulties. Hay que superar esos límites y lograr una armonía mundial. We have to overcome these difficulties and achieve a harmonious world. Pero eso es un desafío muy grande que requiere de mucho esfuerzo de muchas personas. But this is a very huge task which will require uh, efforts of many persons. Actividades como se la como las que se realizan en este congreso sirven para impulsar ese tipo de objetivo and that activities which are doing like this in conference serve to achieve uh, towards this goal to go forward to this goal pensar en un gobierno mundial parece que fuese una utopía en algunos casos to think of a go world government is like a utopian uh, dream y la utopía suele estar siempre en el horizonte. Y nosotros caminamos hacia el horizonte, aunque parezca inalcanzable, vamos hacia ese lugar. Uh, it seems like a horizon. We always walk, we are walking to the horizon uh, untiringly, but it's far away. No siempre llegamos, pero caminamos para ese, para ese lugar. Uh, we walk forward, but still we walk forward. Mm. Thank you. Excellent, that was beautifully answered. Indeed, uh, I'm sure 70, 70 years back when the United Nations was formed, nobody would have at that point of time thought that there is a possibility of having an organization which is going to be represented by all countries. But that came true 70 years back. And now we are thinking of a world government. So maybe people are not afraid, but the idea has come now. Can we take it that way? The idea has come now, and now we are working towards a world government. Right, so who's coming up with the next question? I think uh, Erica wants to also contribute a little bit. Please, Erica. To, to the question. Okay. And it will be wonderful to hear from a youthful Absolutely, point. absolutely. Um, I think that the fear people had is the fear of the leader of the world government turning out not to be what we expected. That the world government would overpower and not guarantee everyone's individual rights. That, that's, I think that's the fear. If, if, if you want to call us as fear, that, that is the only thing we're scared of. That um, the leader of the world government or the world government itself doesn't want love and peace and take something else as a priority. Well, she's right. She's trying to say that uh, we have to sacrifice a little bit of power and the states are afraid of sacrificing their own sovereignty for the cause of a bigger cause, which is peace in the world and a world government. So the leader, yes, they're afraid of who's going to take the lead, right? And they're afraid of them having to lose their power. So I think this is definitely a fear in the minds of all the states, of all the nations. So uh, now, which direction are we going for the next? Oh, we have our justice, honorable justice coming up with a question, I hope. And maybe the students would answer that. We can reverse the process. Right, sir? Okay, this question I would like to answer okay. uh, uh, about uh, the, uh, one government. Because I, I like this word, one government. I, I, I hope 
that uh, every country can the people can go to the other country not visa to travel every country I love but uh, it's hard to be because the every country uh, protects themselves to the another example in Thailand Thailand is the uh, middle of the Southeast Asia the neighbor country uh, the economy is different every uh, from Myanmar from Cambodia from Laos uh, go to Thailand for working so but uh, some problem is happen uh, how to solve this uh, problem I don't know now but in the world this is a s example for the one government is the European Union EU you know you EU have the many country in the Europe they can uh, go to the uh, another country no visa don't know visa N that is the, the uh, example in Southeast Asia we will uh, do like that will happen uh, uh, five years ago thank you so much uh, thank you so much sir I think yes we could understand the position of Thailand in terms of the other countries and that did explain us a little bit thank you so much for that uh, do we have any other question we have the with the permission of the chair can I diversify a little bit may I is there anything else okay uh, we are very lucky to have these representatives from FAOPA and apart from the two students who are here we have other leaders also here and I remember experiencing uh, some nice energy exercises that you conducted with the students last year yeah? yeah so could we have something because this is the group that adds a lot of life to our entire conference and they're all over and they make everybody so lively so let's take advantage of their presence would you like it students yes. they teach you how you can uh, transmit energy yes they even do that so would you can we request you people to come here and uh, uh, just do something with the students we really love it because we don't get this opportunity very often yeah? uh, yeah 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 <clears throat> yeah where do you want to do it how do you want to do it Right, we have been sitting uh, too long, so I think they want you to stand up, okay? They want you to stand up, and they want you to do something really nice and lively. Right, yes. So, hi everyone. Okay, so, listen, uh, we'll have to be, shh, we will have to be quiet, because otherwise... We will not be able to hear the instructions. Okay. Is that okay? So we are talking about Global Village and we hope everyone around the world can live like a whole family. That's why we come here with our own money to buy the flight tickets and we take absent from our teachers and they were totally support for us to do things like this. So for doing things like this, we must have a lot of energy. So even though we have many homework to do but why we can have so much energy because we constantly encourage ourselves so we would like to invite all of you to encourage ourselves would you do that yeah. so everyone just show me your right hand and hold a firm fist and put it around your chest and when I count to three everyone say energy together okay when you say energy and all your body was pumped up with energy like a battery okay Oh, ready? One, two, three. Energy! 
Okay, I can. I I know you can do more than this. Okay, just fill your uh, free your mind. Okay, fill your soul. Ready? One more time. One, two, three. Energy. Yes, and give people around you a high five. Woo! Yeah. And thank you for our honorable ju judges and justice. So we wish everyone can find happiness in everyday life because happiness is what we want and what we get and what we share. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, the members of Falpa. Please sit down. Ah, they brought so much energy into the room. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you really feeling nice and lively? Yes? Okay. You must try this whenever you feel dull, when you're feeling very tired. They must try it then? Yes? And you will get that energy. It said that. Okay. Everything depends on our mind. If we have a positive mindset, we are going to be able to spread positivity around us. And this is what Fao Par also tries to tell us. Every time they come here, we all feel very, very positive when we see them. We get all the energy. So may that energy be transmitted passed on to everybody around you, carry it back home, carry it to your home, carry it to your parents, carry it to your school. So our best wishes to all of you. And thank you all our eminent members, panelists who were here, who shared their views with all the students. And uh, thank you all the students who posed the question. Do you have time for one more question? Or, uh, sure? Yeah, just one more question. We do have a little bit of time from you people. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyone who wants to ask that question? Anybody else? Only you. Come, come, come. Come on. Energy looks like an energy boy. Huh? <laughs> Honorable judges, I want to ask a question. That okay. What steps are being taken to establish a universal language and then? Universal currency. Uh, what steps are being taken? To establish a universal language and universal currency. Oh, one language and one currency. My God. Again, a utopian task. <laughs> I think smile is the common language. Smiling is the common language for humanity. <laughs> That's beautiful, beautiful. One little word. The answer was smile. Smile and you can do wonders. Smile and you can change the world. You can move the earth, right? That's so beautiful. That was really beautiful. You want to elaborate? You want to say something else? That's okay. Still, we can oh, ask oh. them. I think our honorable justice would like to rip answer. Es una muy buena pregunta. It's a very good question. Y um, voy a proponer y no quiero ser egoísta. And I'm going to propose, and I'm not going to be selfish. Que sea en español el uh, lenguaje único. That Spanish could be the unique language, the only language. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we must all appreciate that because in the course of in the course of discussion and the discourses that we just heard, we heard one of our speakers say that we are all different, and it is these differences that make us unique. So each one of us we. Uh, speak a different language and we must all appreciate each other's languages 
we must appreciate the culture the traditions that each one of us follow because that is something which is making all of us unique so uh, we'll wait for the day when we have a common language and a common currency currency right we'll wait for the day when we have a common language and a cor- common currency so i think we'll end on this note yes thank you very much once again all the panelists students are requested to remain seated where you are students are requested to remain seated okay uh just a little mention erica here we have uh we have uh, great that's great but look at what she's doing she goes around the world you do you go to other countries also yeah this oh okay. our organization went to many countries but this is my first time here in india yeah. it's a first time to india but the organization i think has members from 95 countries right 95 countries all over the world all over the world that's really wonderful i just wanted to say that because we have a proud teacher who's really feeling for it thank you so much thank you and that's the last thank you now